All right, we now have Paolo back on the line again with us, I hope. Again, he is the former deputy governor of the Central Bank and head of research at EM Val Partners. Uh, welcome to Biz Asia America. I was talking about earlier this central bank there raising interest rates basically to fight inflation. But there's a whole other dynamic because the economy there right now isn't necessarily strong either. So the question is, is the Brazilian economy is going through this mini crisis and some are blaming the U.S. and there's a lot of blame to go around. What do you see as happening there right now? Well, I think there are two elements. One is, is really quite conjunctural and has to do with a phenomenon that's happening all over the world and, and particularly in some of the emerging market countries that has to do with changes of our expected changes in U.S. monetary policy. So expectations of a stronger dollar, higher U.S. rates, uh, and therefore weaker uh, emerging market currencies and particularly currencies like the Brazilian real. But in addition to this, the Brazilian economy over the last few years has been really underperforming. And it has today very severe macroeconomic imbalances, particularly a, a, a rather large current account deficit, uh, as you pointed out, low growth, rising inflation, a fiscal deficit that is growing very rapidly and seems to be somewhat under, out of control and in general, a lack of any kind of sustainable reforms that would increase investment and productivity. I, so, I, I have to know, be honest with you, uh, Paulo, as I'm listening to you, I, I don't feel all that optimistic that whatever they're doing over there with this raising of the rates and fixing the economy at the same time, what else can the central bank do? Or, or are we even looking at this problem correctly? Is it really the central, central bank's job to, to fix the economy? No, it's not. I mean, the central bank always has a shorter term target. And what the central bank has done right now, I think it's, it's quite adequate in the sense that it's not intervening any more than it was intervening before in the foreign exchange market, but it's doing so in a more predictable way. And that, of course, uh, gives some tranquility to the market. It's offering hedge uh, in U.S. dollars for companies that have borrowed abroad and giving some tranquility to that market. And in addition, it's trying to fight uh, the possible inf inflationary pass through of the changes in the exchange rate. The problem is that this central bank has come very, very late. It, it really uh, didn't act when it, it should have acted. Are, are you saying they're and, making a mistake? Uh, no, they made mistakes before. And so they are now trying to correct their mistakes as well as fighting today's problem. And, you know, whenever you are a central bank with low credibility, you have a bigger problem than if you're a central bank that has always been on top and, and can count on your existing credibility. So this is a, a weak central bank, a central bank that has lost credibility and is now fighting a difficult fight. Uh, and I think it will manage to bumble along. What you have to keep in mind is we have elections uh, in about a year, a year and three months. And so the whole climate is already becoming very politicized. And it's become very clear that Brazil is a low growth economy, as it was uh, always. And, and what was the exception was the, the period of China post uh, WTO and a series of five or six years where given very, very uh, buoyant external environment, it, it benefited a great deal of the Brazilian economy. Pa Paolo, I want to I I ask you something. There's a lot of people worried, and it's not just the central bank in Brazil, but all over the world. The biggest criticism is taking not enough action too slow or taking too much action later on. What I'm trying to get at is this raising of interest rates, it's now at 9% in Brazil. Is that going to be a problem in terms of the overall economy? Have they done too much already? No, they have not. I mean, Brazil, unfortunately, is an economy that has always operated uh, with a regime of high interest rates. And with inflation expectations going up to 7 percent, and actually real inflation, if you discount administered prices, in the range of 8 percent, um, a 9 percent nominal um, interest rate is really a 1 percent real rate, which is not high by historical Brazilian standards. So it's quite possible that interest rates, the real interest rates, will have to go up even further. All right. Paulo Vieira Cunha, 
thank you very much for helping us explain what the uh, Central Bank of Brazil is doing and what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. Thank you.